Hello, thank you for being in a new video. This time I have with me the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 Edition 2024. Let's give it a full review. This computer has been recently introduced, so it incorporates practically the latest in terms of processor, graphics, even the construction and materials. Although it is not yet a computer that we could consider a very high end, but it will definitely give you a considerably high performance. All this while maintaining a considerably light and slim body and construction. The truth is that it surprises me how technology is advancing and now the computers for gamers no longer look like big, fat and clunky computers. The launch price of this computer in Mexico is 36,999 pesos. That's approximately $2,200. Although remember that the prices here are not the same as over there, but more or less to give you an idea. Obviously, based on this price, join me now to know everything that the manufacturer can offer us through this laptop. As you can tell, despite being a gaming laptop, it's actually very sleek. It is not going to have RGB lights, but in this case, it bets on a strip of LEDs called Slash Lightning. In this case, composed of 28 mini LEDs divided into seven sections that you will be able to customize through its app, which we will see a little later, but it definitely gives a rather elegant and attractive touch to this computer that is made entirely of CNC aluminum. That is, it is a super rigid aluminum level that is going to give you very good durability and very good resistance. It honestly feels like a very well built laptop. The feel is completely premium. In this case I have the platinum white color edition, but it is also available in another color edition called Eclipse Grey. Its thickness will be approximately 15.9 millimeters at its thinnest part and 16.3 millimeters at its thickest part. It has a weight of 1.5 kilograms and the truth is that with that aspect it can be comfortably transported. And also obviously being a 14 inch computer it is very compact so it fits perfectly in a backpack, even in backpacks that are not very big. With respect to its hinge and the opening, notice how it can open with one hand, so you don't need to use two hands, one to support and one to open. And that's a good thing. On the other hand, the hinge is not able to open 180 degrees and this is its maximum opening level. With respect to the hinge, it's designed in such a way that the hot air is not directed towards the OLED screen but it's able to be expelled. So I think it has a considerably good design. By this I'm already mentioning to you that it does have a fan. In fact, it's three fans that are distributed throughout this section. It has a very large ventilation grill and at the top it has the whole grill where all the air will come out. Personally I feel that even though it does have a little relief in this part to try to slightly raise the computer and improve air circulation, if you are going to need some other accessory to raise it a little higher if you want to maintain perfect cooling. Speaking of cooling, all three fans have advanced filters to prevent as much dust buildup as possible and it also has several heat pipes to transfer all that heat to the exhaust areas. So it's able to maintain smooth performance even though it obviously does get to feel a bit warm, although we'll get into that a bit later in the performance section. And on this back we also have the Zephyrus logo accompanied by three LEDs indicating the status of the computer. And interestingly it looks like we'll have some audio output on the bottom but don't let that disappoint you because actually the main speakers will be located on the front so we do have front sound which we'll talk about later. But back to the back cover simply to point out that there is no easy slot for upgrading RAM or solid state storage. And with respect to the keyboard, we do have concave keys with 1.7 millimeters of travel, so it's going to offer us a good level of typing and interaction with this important member of the computer. The keyboard, as you can see, does come backlit and supports three levels of brightness. As you may have noticed, it does not support numeric keypad, although virtually no laptop in this price range is going to support it. And it also includes three special keys on the top to control the volume, to turn off our microphone and to enter the Harmony Create application, from which you can customize many things on the computer. The function keys do not bring by default the fast action, so when you press them they will do the action of F1, F2, F3 and so on. If you want to activate the fast action, you must press the FN button. As you can see, it includes a special button for setting the performance profile. 
Whether you want a quiet profile with a fan that runs a little slower or a performance profile where you don't care if the fan starts to get a little louder, honestly though, it's a pretty quiet fan. Another little detail you should notice is that the enter key is not in the shape of an L but is split, so at the top you will have another key and that could generate a little confusion at first use, but after a learning curve you can get used to it. The power button is separate from the keyboard and comes with a rather particular shape, but one thing I really liked about this computer was the trackpad as it is quite large. Usually on Windows laptops the trackpads are very small, but in this case it does offer us a trackpad of about 6 inches with the same proportion as the screen, so it makes navigation much easier. At the top you can't press to click, so it's about 3 quarters of the way down the trackpad when you can start pressing. That can cause dragging content to release when you're getting to the top, and that would be a complaint on my part because even though it's a very large trackpad, you can't take full advantage of it when dragging and dropping content, because when you're getting to the three-quarter area, it automatically does the drop action, even though you still have your finger on top of it. So, it doesn't seem to me to be the best implementation in that sense, but it is a trackpad that allows you to move across its entire surface, and obviously also supports multiple gestures for switching between applications, for scrolling, for zooming, and many other things. So it's a very complete trackpad, but it could be improved even more. Regarding connectivity, on the left side we will find the power connector, then HDMI to be able to output the video signal. In this case it is the 2.1 version, then we will find a USB-C port 4.0, compatible with DisplayPort and also compatible with power delivery of 100 watts. So if you forgot your charger that comes included, you can also charge it via USB-C and that's a plus. Plus you could plug in an adapter here to multiply the ports. Then we find a USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 connector which is always valuable and should be noted because many modern computers are starting to do without this port, but I feel there are still plenty of accessories you can connect here. And finally we have the 3.5mm connector for microphone and headphones. And on the right side we'll find another USB-C port, but in this case it's the 3.2 Gen 2 version. Also compatible with DisplayPort, but in this case it does not support power delivery. Then we will find another USB-A port, 3.2 Gen 2, and finally a slot for micro SD cards. Honestly, it seems to me that the connectivity of all ports is very good. Perhaps the most demanding in terms of gaming would like some Ethernet port to maintain a more stable wired internet connection, but honestly with some adapter you could also achieve it. And with regard to wireless connectivity, it supports Wi-Fi 6E networks offering good download speeds without a doubt. In addition, it also offers Bluetooth 5.3, so I think that in both port connectivity and wireless connectivity, we find some positive things in this computer. The screen is 14 inches and has OLED technology, which could give you the feeling that you are in front of a touch screen, although in this case it is not a touch screen, but its resolution is very high. Specifically, it is 2880 by 1800 pixels, which some might go as far as calling it 3K. Its ratio is 16 to 10, finding a good balance between a computer for viewing multimedia content and a computer for working. The density it achieves with this resolution and this size is 242 pixels per inch, which for a laptop I think is fine. From the distance where we usually see the content, we will have a good sharpness for text and obviously also for multimedia content. Its brightness is honestly not exaggeratedly high, it is 500 nits, but being a computer designed for indoor use, it will definitely give you a good brightness experience in these scenarios. It's not as recommended outdoors, especially because of the level of overheating it could reach. That's why I don't think a brighter screen is needed. Also, this screen gives us a response time of 0.2 milliseconds, so for gaming it comes in very handy. Plus, it's able to cover 100% of the DCI-P3 color gamut, so it confirms to us that we are in front of a very attractive display that also comes with 120Hz in its refresh rate, which could prove to be very attractive when gaming.
Also through its settings in Harmony Create, it is going to offer us a certain level of protection for OLED screens. Remember that it is not recommended to leave static content on these screens for long periods of time and very high brightness levels. So the screen will automatically protect itself by activating a screensaver if you are not using it for a long time. In addition, it is also recommended to use the Windows transparent bar to avoid screen burn-in if you have very static content. So in the settings, it makes these recommendations and you can easily activate the options. Finally, it also offers us some visual rest filters, which is something traditional in the world of laptops, so it can get to give you a comfortable experience. Obviously also the low brightness is comfortable, so I really like the screen a lot. Let me describe to you now the results that we have with the speakers because in addition to the front speakers we have the speakers that are on the bottom which are the ones that are focused on projecting the bass frequencies. So honestly the sound is of good quality with very good volume as well and this is something that I like because generally in the Windows laptop market it's a little bit complicated to find computers with really good sound so this is one of them. The experience is going to be really good. How about listening to a test? Although remember, it's not the same as listening to it live. It does not have any application to improve the equalization and in the case of microphones we have two on the front next to the webcam. Next we are going to listen to a test recorded with these microphones. This is an audio test recorded with the integrated microphones of the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 edition of the years of the years. By default it has some level of noise cancellation but later in the software section I'll show you that it can be disabled. Let's now talk about the camera which is going to give us a full HD signal for video calls which comes in handy. It even comes with infrared compatible with Windows Hello. We'll see it later but for now let's take a look at the testing of this camera. This is the result we got in a well lit condition. It definitely looks good. We're going to have a camera also with good level of amplitude and we're not going to find noise or anything like that in these lighting conditions. Indoors it doesn't have as much definition of our face anymore and there's a little bit of grain around it but it's really still a good image signal considering it's a laptop camera. So the video calling experience I think is positive with this computer. We enter the software section to tell you that it comes with Windows once, as it could not be otherwise. And in this case, the most recent thing you will surely have noticed is Copilot. We have artificial intelligence directly at our fingertips in Windows to ask it anything, tell it to look for information, to generate a special result, a summary. In short, the possibilities are very great with this tool that is not exclusive to Windows, but that is with an easy and fast access directly in Windows once in this last update. Microsoft includes the new Clipchamp editor that they purchased some time ago. So if you need a basic video editor, you could use this tool. And if you want more advanced options, you'll have to pay for a subscription. So here the tool is present, although it doesn't compare at all to iMovie and doesn't bring some other tools like GarageBand alternatives or things you might find on Mac. Plus the Office Suite obviously requires a Microsoft 365 subscription. So Windows, I think, is a system that we all already know perfectly well. Remember, you can create multiple desktops and then switch between them using the trackpad. But let me tell you what Asus includes as part of their software. For starters, we have the My Asus application from which we can access a bit more configuration. Although, curiously, in this model, I feel it comes a bit more limited. We have battery settings, connectivity settings to prioritize certain tasks in Wi-Fi connectivity and also to automatically connect to routers with better signal. But that's basically all you can do through this app in terms of settings. You can also obviously update the system and drivers which always comes in handy. But in this bottom part they still offer us some other applications like Screen Expert which as they all count shows us a quick toolbar on this side. It could be useful for some users. It also offers us a navigation between our windows and the monitors we have connected to quickly change their position.
It will also allow us a tool to control the microphone, although we already have this kind of tools in the keyboard, so maybe it is not so relevant, the functions that it adds in this part. But if we access to the configuration, notice that it also allows us to have a faster management of our windows. For example, if we have a window open, notice how now that I activated this option, if I want to move this window, the app switcher option appears, so I could easily switch to another monitor. In this case, I only have one one monitor, but if I had more monitors connected, they appear in this part to switch the window with much more speed. We're also going to have the function to find our cursor quickly. If we shake it, a blue circle will light up around it so we can find it easily. It's a tool that from my point of view should already be built into Windows, but Asus has added it in this case. And finally, we can also lock the cursor so that it doesn't leave our screen in case we have more monitors connected. So those are the functions that we can achieve through screen screen expert. And another application that we have added is Glidex, which as they all tell us is going to allow us to connect to our cell phone and take advantage of many more functions. As you can see, I am projecting my cell phone to the computer. In some cases, you could also control your cell phone directly from the computer. It depends on the manufacturer's configuration. Although obviously not being an ASUS device, maybe the connection may take a little longer. You have to approve several permissions, so it is not an ecosystem integration, but you can achieve this connection between all your device. Note how our cell phone could also function as an external monitor. Obviously, it could also be a tablet. I'm going to switch this window to the second monitor and see how this way we have two monitors connected, so it can also give you more productivity. You could also use your keyboard and your mouse to log into your cell phone. And obviously, it also has a fast file transfer between your devices. You could also answer calls directly from your computer and you could also use your cell phone camera as a computer camera. See how simple it is? I'm going to click connect a new device. I'm going to scan the QR code and that's it. I'm just going to have to give it the necessary permissions to use the camera and after that the computer will detect everything. Notice I'm going to open the camera application on the computer and in this case it's still detecting the computer's camera. But if I hit the rotate button, notice how it has now switched to my cell phone camera. So it can turn out to be quite a useful tool. Honestly, it goes very well, not much latency and totally wireless without too much configuration. You could also have remote access to your files by logging in. So this application concretely, let's say that it comes to satisfy the ecosystem options, even with devices that are not of the same brand. So if you have a Galaxy phone or any other brand, you can get to have a better integration. Although with iPhone, it seems that it can get to have more complications. It will also have the Armory Crate application, where you can view the statistics of all the consumption of your computer, in addition to changing profiles. If you want a silent profile, a performance profile, or you can activate a turbo profile if it's plugged into the power, where it's obviously going to give the maximum demand to the computer. But I recommend that you only activate that mode if you are in a very cool environment. You can also change the GPU mode and it will also allow you to configure some things on your computer such as modifying the action buttons at the top. By default they will control the volume, microphone and shortcut. But you can customize specifically what you want to happen when you press those buttons which can be quite useful especially because it also allows you to enable macros directly with these buttons when playing. You can also manage all the lighting that has to do with Aura Creator, which can be synchronized with other accessories so that everything is lit in the same way. And we have the access to slash lightning that I was telling you from the beginning of the video that is going to allow us to configure the lighting pattern that we have on the back cover. So in this way, you can go about configuring between different styles if you want it to be a bar or an effect similar to the charging effect. And you can also configure its frequency and its brightness. So it definitely gives you very good options to be able to customize that bar and make it look your style. Or you could also have it turned off. 
in the audio section we're also going to be able to modify the microphone that we saw earlier so in this part you can select if you want it to have a high noise cancellation mode or if you want it to detect several people talking it depends on how you are going to use your computer you can also select that the microphone is fully directional or that the microphone is low in the 60s the truth is that it comes very well to configure all your microphone experience Interestingly, it also has noise cancellation for the speakerphone, which seems very strange to me, but it is present. Surely if you have a video call and the other person has a lot of noise, maybe with this option you could get to hear it better. Next, we are presented with a resource monitor that can show us a graph of the frames per second in real time. We will also find a modern standby assistant that will allow us to hibernate the computer so that it does not consume so much energy and then resume it quickly. And finally we have the power saving profiles and this that we had already seen from the main screen. We are also going to find Aura Sync to be able to have a whole synchronization of our wallpaper and our lighting effects with other devices. Although I already told you that this computer does not have RGB. Then we're going to find screen profiles so that the colors are represented differently. And finally we have access to our game library so from here we can launch our game. And by the way Asus includes a virtual pet that you can have all the time on screen. Personally I don't find it attractive. It will show you some dialogues suddenly but honestly it doesn't have any other use. Then we will find some profiles where we can modify some system settings very quickly and easily as the fan slash lightning, the display profile and that's it. These are the options that you can configure through this Armory Crate application. For security, we are not going to find fingerprint reader. I think this is an important point of absence in a device of this price. It would be much better to see this type of solution. Although instead, it is going to offer us a camera compatible with Windows Hello. You just have to configure it and see how easy it is to register. We must remember that not all cameras are compatible with this as it observes how it is making an infrared projection to detect my face well and thus have a secure registration. So that's it. So in a way it gets to make up for not having fingerprint recognition in exchange for having Windows Hello compatibility. I just turned off the computer and now we're going to turn it on just to verify what the login process is like by verifying our face. By the way, you're going to see more or less how long it takes to turn on this computer which is obviously a very short time although if you want more speed the ideal would be to just suspend the computer instead of turning it off. But notice how it already logged in just by checking my face. And obviously if you put your Microsoft account you will be able to have advanced encryption to prevent anyone from accessing your files without authorization. The battery on this device is 73 watt hours. It's a very large battery but also at the same time it's a very power hungry battery because the processor is very powerful and also it has dedicated graphics. So the battery despite being very large can give you average performance. Running this application that is from the Microsoft store to put maximum work to the CPU, the computer was able to give me 1 hour 50 of work. This obviously with the maximum level of demand. It is a level of demand that you rarely go to test to have a reference also in conjunction with other computers and honestly does not get to stand out too much. But again I repeat this is because the processor has a lot of power and this application is going to demand the maximum power to the processor in a totally constant way. So it's a very high demand and the battery life was not that remarkable. However, playing YouTube videos simply, this in full HD resolution with 50% brightness, it reached 5 hours and 38 minutes. So it improved significantly, but again it doesn't get to stand out too much despite having a very large battery. Let's just say it's about average. So the battery doesn't seem to me to be a very good point, but it didn't disappoint either. Like many gaming computers, the charging adapter will be quite large. In this case, it offers us 180 watts to give even more power to the graphics card when plugged in. So this can also become an important aspect to consider because in addition to the computer weighing 1.5 kilograms, you have to add the weight of the charger and it's also a pretty big charger. 
So it is not so practical in this sense, but practically all gaming computers have this type of charging adapters. The advantage is that you can disconnect the cable from the sides so the plug does not use much space in the electrical contact. In 15 minutes of charging it recovered 31% power, in 30 minutes it recovered 56%. So it does have fast charge and that's a good thing, but then you can put it a little bit slower to protect the battery. So the full charge to 100% took 1 hour and 40 minutes. However, remember that it is not so recommended to charge your battery up to 100% and for that very reason Asus adds in its My Asus app a setting to block charging up to 80%. And this can be a very useful thing if you want to be very careful with your battery. So the recommended thing to do is to enable this option in order to keep the battery from degrading so fast. And if at some point you need to charge your computer up to 100%, you can turn on this option which will only stay enabled for 24 hours. So the setting to protect the battery seems positive to me. Now let's talk about performance and for that I'm doing an application opening test. While I tell you that it has the AMD Ryzen 9 processor, specifically the 8945HS model with integrated AMD Radeon 780M graphics and also dedicated NVIDIA GeForce RTX 405050 laptop graphics accompanied by 16 gigabytes of LPDDR, 5 RAM and a terabyte of solid state storage. That is the edition being distributed in Mexico, although in other regions it might vary slightly. 4.8 seconds it took to open these 10 applications. Obviously the first ones were very simple and opened faster. The last three were more complex and raised the average. In this case the test was done with the balanced profile. Now we are going to repeat the test in maximum performance. This is because, as you know in Windows, it can change quite a bit the performance depending on the power consumption profile you select. So let's see in this maximum performance mode, unplug from the power how much power we can achieve. And we got pretty much the same performance. Even in this second test it took a little bit longer despite having the high performance profile. So I think it has similar performance in this case. It seems like it automatically detected that we did want to give it more intense use. Now I'm going to plug it into the power and repeat this test. This is because again as you know in Windows when they're plug it into power they can get a little bit more power especially when it comes to graphics applications. Although here that we're just testing the opening of applications can maintain very similar performance. 3.6 seconds on average. So it improved a little bit. Overall I think it does perform well in these types of tasks that we're just starting to test opening applications. But now we're going to test the RAM. It includes 16 gigabytes and in this case that I open 10 applications it's pretty much maxed out. Now I'm going to open some projects within these applications. In Lightroom I already have some photographs. In Photoshop we're going to open a document as well. It's already loaded and now we're also going to open some presentations, an Excel document a Word document, absolutely everything we can. And I'm also opening 11 tabs in the web browser, so we're giving it a considerably high workload. Obviously for a device of these specs it still shouldn't be anything too complex. The RAM is at 97%, but notice how it's still giving us fairly smooth performance even in the video workflow. In Lightroom Photography we also have a good response when we are working. Photoshop also continues to be responsive and when we are switching back and forth between all of these applications it seems to continue to perform very well. We are going to switch some applications to other desktops just so you can continue to appreciate the good performance. We are going to switch between all the desktops and it definitely does maintain a super smooth performance when working. The RAM memory is very good especially because it's LPDDR5 so it's going to offer us a very good speed. In this case the storage is one terabyte in a single partition and by the way if you are interested in the benchmarks in this case plugged in the current in Cinebench in multi-core gave us 15,676 points and in single core 1,618. While unplugged from the current remained very similar with 14,008 points in multi-core and 1,531 points in single core.
Next, we are going to do our test of exporting a video by stitching together four clips recorded at 4K with a total duration of one minute with the H.264 codec using the default Adobe Premiere settings. So let's put it to work and see how long it takes. And that's it, it took 25 seconds. I think that's a good time, although it's obviously not the fastest we've seen. To have an even more extreme test, we're going to enable turbo mode to see what it would be capable of in this type of scenario. So we're going to repeat this test to see whether or not it changes the time. We're going to start it and wait for it to finish. And it did indeed improve a little bit coming in at 23 seconds. So the turbo mode could give you that extra power that you might need in some cases. And I think for video editing work in 4K, it could be a good proposition to start with. Obviously for very complex work, perhaps it could be a little short, especially because of the RAM if you need to work very complicated things. But the priority of this device is gaming, so let's go play. In this case, something strange happened with my screen recordings. So we played Halo Infinite, and in this game, the graphic settings, you're seeing it on screen. We just went up to 60 frames per second, but everything else defaults to medium. So on this same setting we play, for some reason my screen recording goes much faster, so it seems to have a little problem there, but honestly, the gameplay was very good. Plugged in. It was able to hit 120 frames per second with good stability. The minimum was more or less 102 frames, although obviously this can vary depending on the areas of the game and many other things, but in general we could say that it does maintain a very high performance when plugged into the power, although the warm-up is very important. It gets up to 55.9 degrees Celsius. That's why I was telling you that it's not a computer intended for outdoor use. Ideally, it should be used indoors even with air conditioning if you want to have an even cooler and more stable performance, although it maintains a good stability due to its good cooling. So when it heats up, you don't feel a drop in performance, but you do get to feel a lot of heating on the top lid. When you unplug it is limited to 60 frames per second, although it still maintains a good stability. At some specific moments you can get to see frame losses, the normal thing we can say so. And obviously also the temperature drops a bit as the processor power is limited a bit, but honestly it offers you a good gameplay. I also played Gears of Wars Ultimate Edition and noticed that also in this case it has several things disabled so it doesn't offer the highest graphic settings, but it's still a game that looks good and in this case gave me an excellent experience, both plugged into the power and unplugged. So I have no doubt that it's going to give you good gameplay in this type of content. It gave me 60 frames per second with practically 100% stability. At times it would go down to only 59. So this content is pretty straightforward for this computer which also didn't get too hot in this game, especially compared to the heat it had in other content, although it is a lot of heat anyway. 51.1 degrees Celsius on the outer lid. In Fortnite, notice that the graphic settings that appear available have several things in epic quality. So in this regard, it does show good compatibility directly by default. Also, the experience when playing was good, practically 100% stability, since it was able to reach 60 frames per second constantly. In the movements, it went down to 54 or so, but it almost never dropped below that. So the experience really is very good when it's plugged into the power. Although again, the temperature got up to 55.7 degrees Celsius on the outer lid, which obviously can get to resentful if you have your hands closed. But obviously we're playing with a gamepad so it doesn't get uncomfortable. It just does heat up in a major way like virtually all gaming computers. When unplugged, it again reaches a good stability. Although it does get to have more low peaks, especially on fast movements, but it is still close to 60 frames per second. Although the temperature also drops to 50.3 degrees Celsius because it's more limited in power and also a little bit more limited on the fan. So, because of that, because it's a little bit more limited on the fan, but that's also why it drops the power of the graphics card to avoid further heating. And finally, I played FIFA.
In this case, it was the most difficult game and it struggled a lot, especially when it comes to replays. While you are playing, it is able to give you 60 frames per second, practically 100% stable. But when you load a replay, believe me, there are times when it freezes. Although I'm not 100% sure what graphics quality we had selected because it just popped up all on auto or default without telling me what the specific quality was. But it is exactly the replays when the device drops in performance in these games. Even when plugged into power, its temperature actually went up to 57.4 degrees Celsius during this game. And when it's unplugged, it actually drops significantly as well, approximately about 48 frames per second during the game, which is still somewhat fluid. But obviously you're no longer hitting 60 like you did when it was plugged in. And obviously in replays it drops significantly, it freezes for a few moments, and then it's more or less at about 20 frames per second replay. So that section is the one that costs the most. Confirming that it is not yet a top of the range computer, but it can give you a good performance in different contents, as long as you also go adapting the graphic quality. And with this we have reached the end of the video review of this computer, which I find extremely nice, a very nice design, but I do consider that you need to use it in a cool environment if you want to have a very good experience. The fans do a very good job, but you still feel very hot in this area. So the best thing to do, as I pointed out, is to use it indoors. If you are that kind of user, it can give you a good performance in conjunction with a very good design. For now, that's all for this video. If you liked it, you know you can tell us about it and we'll see you next time.